microphone And you have downed in your car to your home Every week it's all the new A deep talk or an interview She'll make it laugh, she'll make it cry When it's dark out, she's a light When you're down, get your feeling right Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of That Sounds Fun. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Before we dive into today's conversation, I want to tell you about one of our incredible sponsors, AG1 by Athletic Greens. I've been drinking AG1 because it's just a really simple way for me to get all the nutrients I need right at the start of my day. Each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. I fill up my little shaker with lots of cold water, add a scoop of AG1, add some frozen lemon juice ice cubes. Get on board with that, you guys. Then I shake it up and I'm ready to go. If I'm running short on time and can't mix my AG1 before I head out, I'll just grab a travel pack. It's so easy. If there's one supplement I would invite you to start, it is AG1. And that's why we've partnered with them for so long and I'm so grateful. So if you want to take ownership over your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2. And for a limited time, you'll get 10 free AG1 travel packs. Yeah, that is 10 free travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash sounds fun. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash sounds fun. Check it out while this offer lasts. Today on the show, oh boy, we get to talk with our buddy, Eddie Koffeltz, as we continue our years in review. Remember, we are celebrating 10 years of the That Sounds Fun podcast, so Eddie is on once a month for us to talk about that year. We've done 2014, we've done 2015, and today we will just keep talking about 2016, sort of. You know how we do. We really tried this time, you guys. We really tried. Here is our recap of 2016 with our good friend. Eddie Koffeltz. That sounds fun. Edward, here we go. 2016. Let's talk about 2016. Welcome back to That Sounds Fun. What a pleasure. Okay. Thank you, Annie. This is very, this is kind of 20, I don't know how to approach this because 2016 is kind of sweet. Because? Because this was the first time I was ever on your show. And that's exactly right. But it's but it's more than that. Like, cause I got it, like I'm gonna get emotional. I could feel it because I when I was hearing it, it was a little much. <laughs> but it was like I started listening to the first time we were on the show together. First of all, it was precious because you're like, it's show 21. So you're still getting burning, oh, yeah, right? It's so early. And you had yeah. just found out that day that you were Nashville's one of Nashville's top shows. And you were yeah. tickled. It was like oh. you, Jamie Ivy, <laughs> right? Like still one of Nashville's top shows, right? Like it was just all of these sweet and you were just like so happy. And then you had me on because I had started The New Activist and you had no business. You had no business having me on. Sweet of you. But it was like a little thing I had just started and you pitched the heck out of that show. And it was just (laughs) like, oh my gosh, it was just very tender. (laughs) Well, you know, the reason I had no business having you on about the new activist is I was not an activist. You <laughs> made me an activist. You have totally changed my life as far as that goes. So thank you for that. Oh, man. Yeah, it's really funny that 2016 really is the year that our friendship became a real thing versus just fans of each other. <laughs> Right, that's right. And you and because it's also the year that I auditioned for Relevant, that I got to be on the Relevant podcast, which is what really sealed us doing a show together that led us to know in the future we'd want to do a show together. Yeah. That got us here. So I remember to Relevant too. Being on Relevant with you and like, you know, there's a room full of people and you're trying to figure out your placement. And I was like, Well, here's one thing I know. I'm gonna talk to her and then the ah. the other guys can just do their little dance and do whatever they need to do. But I like talking to her. <laughs> Oh, so fun. Yeah. 2016. Here's the biggest uh, 2016 news. Second to yeah. our friendship. Yes, yes. Calcifying. I do not use that word enough. And I'm, I think it's a great word. I can go either way with that word because it is a little medical to me. Calcification makes me think of bones. I guess. But that doesn't make me think of so a I'm, friendship. So I'm with you. But it does. It's not necessary no, I mean, for me to dig into this. It does also make me think of bones and nails and stuff. But it doesn't make me think uh-huh. of you. But fine. Anyhow, what else happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just am realizing as soon as I as soon as the word came to my mind, this is why we are big proponents of people reading. 
Oh. It's because right. when you read words like that, get in your brain that right. you would have never picked yourself. Right. You can cauterize your mind. Cauterize. That's when that you, one's really medical. Do, do you know what That's, that is? That word smells to me. That word smells. I feel terrible. like I can smell that word. If someone's going to cauterize anything in me, I would need to be out because if I can smell yeah. cauterization happening, no, I'm going to need to not be present. I've we've crossed into a medical territory that I'm not yeah. able to handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I want to tell you a medical story about my LASIK, but I think I shouldn't. When did you have LASIK? I think it's too risky. 2016, actually. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. Wowie Zowie. The fall of 2016. Oh, boy. I had it the fall of 2016. What was the second thing it you was were going to bring up, though? What was the thing? Oh, the, the codified. Olympics. Oh, yeah. Because if there is a family who loves the Olympics, tis the Koffeltz. Which brings me to an issue I have with you that I wasn't going to bring up, but then you've walked us into it. Yeah, the Lord must have intended this to happen. Closing ceremonies of the Olympics. Won't be able to watch it this year. Do you know why? I know, because we're doing the <laughs> August 11th event at the Ryman. <laughs> the closing ceremonies are also the evening of August 11th. Like, it's worth it, but just, I mean... That's about Barely. the only I thing. I know, I can't, because your whole family's possibly going to be in the room. Oh, and we'll therefore. All, oh, yeah, we'll all be there. I watched an I Olympics know. holding Eve coming back from Ethiopia on an airport TV. I watched opening wow. ceremonies. We're going to okay, But let's call it, if we were on top of the opening ceremonies, that'd be a bigger problem to me as well. Closing ceremonies. Right. Everyone's gone home. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does not calcify my like heart towards you. It hair. does not. Hair. Yeah, it <laughs> but I want you to put like, let's put like on a scale of one to 100. Yeah. Put put opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies on that scale. Oh, Importance, enjoyment, give them both a score. Opening ceremonies have to be 100. I, they are, I would oh, never 100. miss them. They're very special. It's it's okay. a unifying experience of the whole planet. Start what do to you finish. Think? Are you watching from when, as soon as NBC, as soon as Bob Costas yep. is landed in Paris, are you watching from Bob Costas in Paris yes. through Zambia? Are you watching till the end? Oh, yes. Yeah. Today's show coverage in the morning. I, like opening ceremonies yeah. is until they go dark at night and then start repeating it. And then you're like, okay, I've already seen this. I can go to bed. That I mean, oh, wow. opening ceremony. Where are you? Yeah, I mean, I'm giving open opening ceremonies. If I if there is something on TV that makes me want to have people to my house and everybody yeah. watch it together and get decorations, that's a high 90s score. Yeah. So if for sure, opening ceremonies is high 90s for me. Yeah. Where is closing ceremonies for you? So closing ceremonies is very difficult uh, because you know it's ending, and uh -huh. it's it's a difficult thing to kind of in, like internalize. Do you hear that noise? I just got to call it out. Yeah, is that the is that the um, construction in your home? No, it is not the construction in our home. And Craig, who is editing this, won't be able to get rid of this noise. We have oh, cleaners that come once a month to do a deep clean. They refuse to tell oh, us what time sure. they're coming, but they are so reasonably priced that we let them. I thought surely they're not going to show up in the only hour today where I'm going to be uh -huh. recording my voice on a very popular but podcast. And literally... <laughs> I put on my headphones and up the drive they walk. So sorry, world. I gotta. Get, we gotta get our toilets sorry, deep world, cleaned. Sorry, world. We're getting a deep clean. <laughs> this is. There is no choice, and I feel like everybody just needs to understand. And I'm really sorry, Annie. It's so unprofessional. It's totally fine. It's um, totally fine. It's a fifty percent because part of me is so okay. happy to see the athletes again, but then there's a progressive sadness because you realize the athletes from earlier in the games, two weeks earlier, have already gone home, and then way home. They're oh, way gone. Wait, like they're done, and they should be. I mean, like I get it. Yeah. And then it gets sadder and sadder because then finally the other country comes and raises their flag. And you're like, oh, it's going to be four years before I see this. And by the end of the opening ceremonies, I'm wow. like, this is a bummer, man. By the end of the opening ceremonies, it feels like a bummer. Is that what you said? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I probably said that. But I meant by the end of the closing ceremonies, Got I'm it. like, how could this be over? Every night if we've watched two hours. If you knew how hours. much my personality is, it's a bummer by the end of the opening ceremonies because that means this is going to end. That is how I feel. You know how I know this about you? One time we were texting during a football game and you were and Georgia was losing and you're like, I can't, I can't see the end of it. And I'm like, you can't see the end of it. Like I would never dream of not finishing, but it's not a... It's it's not a pro on me or a con on you. It's just you physically. I know. Can you just not do it? You just can't. 
I just, there's, yeah, there, there, because there are places I have to do it Mm -hmm. where I don't have to do it. I don't, I do not force myself to suffer through pain and things that do not matter because it is so a learned skill for me to suffer (laughs) through pain and things that do matter. (laughs) But I also love that you just know it. You're like, I just, yeah, I just know. So I'm like sports. I have to be okay. Not seeing the end. I feel the same way about the World Cup that you feel about. And uh, there's a couple of soccer tournaments, but mostly World Cup is how you feel about the Olympics. We're like, I want to watch every game. Yeah. I want to watch every minute. And as soon as the championship starts, I go, oh, my gosh, it's going to be four years. It's really. See us again. Really. Where are the Olympics in 2028? I don't don't think I know. I don't remember. France this year. I'm only current Olympics. Hey, Siri, where will the Olympics be held in 2028? Los Angeles will oh. host the 2028 Olympics. Oh, America! We, we, we did know that because uh, Brienne would have known that. She's already answering it as she's listening to it, I'm sure. Because uh, we're like, if we're ever going to get to an Olympics, realistically, it's like the girls will be 17 Teenagers. and 16. Yeah. Like, it's brilliant. In, but we've got, uh, but th- let's focus on this year. Are you opening ceremonies? Are you doing French food and stuff? I have not, I'm sure. I haven't thought that far ahead, but yeah, I will now. Yeah, French That's food. That's a great idea. Baguettes, um, cheese, butter, croissant. Butter, bread, um, <laughs> butter. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> That's right. Ham. What else? What do you I Croque wanted, monsieur, croque madame. When That's I think still of, all ham and cheese and bread and butter. When I think of French food, <laughs> I think more of like riding a like um a classic bicycle with it all in a paper yep. bag and the baguette out. Like, I don't know the food. I a just basket know. with like red and white checkered. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. I just know how. But I, I don't know what's food. inside. But I'll tell you what you know is inside bread, cheese, butter, baguettes. Yeah, and baguettes. <laughs> baguettes, which is a whole different thing. Um, I also have a. Uh, you know, I you know I like Lego. I like building Lego. Uh huh. The most recent I've, one I've was. I it fully. I know you do. I, and it's a great hobby for me, but I built yeah. the Concorde. Um, there was the a plane. Conc- the P- Concorde plane, which is a French plane. So that will be out yes. on the probably, it'll probably be like a centerpiece. Um, yeah, tell me. Okay, so y'all, I remember this mm-hmm. 2016, 2020, 2020, 2021, 2024. Yeah, all of them. Tell me what your opening ceremonies will look like in the Coffolds house. Will it just be the four of y'all or do you have people over? No, we'll have people if they're into watching it. Like, you know, how sometimes you have a super, it, but it, you know, sometimes you have a Super Bowl party and it's just like, all right, it's okay. We're, we're here to hang out and eat and watch halftime together. I yeah. personally like watching it and hearing commentators, but I'm like, I can, I can, I can see that point um, with, uh, with, with, you know, like a Super Bowl. Olympics sure. is like you got to be into this. You got to care about the Olympics. So we will have some Olympics friends over. We will have Great. a bunch of French food and of course a Lego Concord, which is of course. something that I, we're all pretty excited about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean the centerpiece of that with a r- white and red checkered tablecloth under it, that is beautiful. Oh yeah, and the maybe new some di- blue bonnet flowers, I don't know. I don't know what's over. I, I haven't been to France in a very long time. Different baguettes. Is- Different kinds of baguettes yeah, and multiple breads. Multiple baguettes and bread, <laughs> butter right. and cheese and right. ham. ham I ham. also know sometimes on menus they have green beans in French. So oh, maybe nice. there's French green beans. That's like when you go, do you ever, that's what you get at KFC after you fast for a little bit. Just order it and that. I don't miss a green bean, man. If I'm a green beans on a menu, I am interested. That I is am a, interested. Call, that is a callback. Okay, right. so first of all, dear anyone who's involved with the Los Angeles Olympics, please uh, get the Coffolds there. Well, and the and the like, and the downs. I mean, we gotta just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I if if we've got one, if we've got four tickets available, please take the Coffolds. If you've got five tickets available, I'll tag along. Oh, you. I don't. Would. I I enjoy it. I do not care as much as you care. I am going to be shouting from the rooftops to get tickets to the World Cup when it's in the U.S. next, which is 26. Yeah. There's a couple of things that you have been very generous and unabashedly used this platform for. You have done an SNL all call for tickets so many times that it's just I know. I know. It didn't serve us. But with someday, we're going to get into <laughs> Not SNL. Yet. Not and yet. It's because That's you just exactly keep right. trying. I feel like this fall could really be our SNL days because now that I'm here, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm Coming at you live from New York currently. Yeah, yeah, you are. Now that I am here and we have the, op- like, I can do other things. I can, like, ask people in person. We can, now that I can do the lottery and, like, think about it. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, you've got but a we, little bit. Didn't we just establish that the lottery happens at the end of this season? Yes. Listen, I don't think you and I talked about this. What? But Emily Freeman and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Who do you think takes over for Lauren Michaels? I have a couple. Uh, who do you think? Do you have ideas? I think Seth Myers could. Yeah. The Scud, I've heard Scuttle about Tina Fey. That's I the think most be, defined but I think, yeah. Scuttlebutt. Like Tina is, Fey? Yeah. I, I think it's going to be Steve Higgins. Oh, brilliant. Steve Higgins, for people, if you don't know him, his, he is the guy that stands off to the side during Jimmy Fallon's uh, Tonight Show. And also a writer for SNL. Well, and they're also main, his son. Yeah. Well, he's he used to be a writer. He's now like a main producer. He is generally like seen as the- Of SNL? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, Steve Higgins runs SNL, really. Um, and it just seems like age wise, pedigree wise, like he's a very safe bet. I would be thrilled. Is he to significantly have... younger than Lauren Michaels? I would bet he's 50. I would bet he's in his f late fifties, but young enough to do a decade on there. L Lauren uh -huh. Michaels though, uh -huh. is sort of like replacing the queen. Like you're never going to have a monarch. That's exactly right. For... Oh, I've got to write this down right now while you're saying it, because hold if we don't talk hold about on. the stuff that's going on in the Royal family, we just stopped oh, the whole boy. show. And we are going to now talk about Kate. That sounds fun. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation real quick to tell you about another amazing podcast you should be listening to, The Paula Ferris Show. Y'all know I don't like to should my friends, but Paula's show is incredible. She's not only a great friend of mine, she's an Emmy award-winning journalist, and her podcast is bringing you candid conversations and interviews to help you live your best life. She's literally covering everything from personal journeys to societal issues. And Paula's talked to guests from every walk of life. She interviewed Whoopi Goldberg, Jenna Kutcher, Trey Kennedy, so many more. Some of my favorite episodes are the ones with her husband. She just had an episode with her teen daughter and Sissy Goff on together. Oh my gosh, it was really incredible. She talks a lot about being a working mom and navigating relationships and parenting and social media media boundaries and literally everything and anything that helps us process our day-to-day -day lives she is talking about. So tune in to explore the unfiltered truths, the inspiring moments and thought-provoking discussions that make us all very human. I guarantee when you listen, you'll dig a little deeper and laugh a little bit and maybe cry a little. And most importantly, you'll get to learn a lot from my friend Paula and her guests. So go listen to the Paula Ferris show wherever you are listening to this podcast and make sure you're subscribed. I don't want you to miss a single episode that is coming. And for more information on Paula Ferris, you can visit her website, paulaferrisofficial.com. That's P-A-U-L-A-F-A-R-I-S official.com. Check out her show. And one more amazing partner I get to tell you about, ZocDoc. Are you that one friend in your group that loves to like treat yourself? Listen, it is okay. Honestly, we should all take a turn being that friend in the group. And you know you, get a pedicure and opt for the extra 10-minute foot massage with a green tea-infused lotion, yes. Or you refuse to make coffee at home because that fancy coffee shop is like down the stairs and out the door to the left, and then you cross the street and it's the second building on the right. <laughs> Or maybe that's just me. Or maybe you opt for that extra legroom seat on the plane because your vacation starts right now. Well, if you treat yourself to the top options with everything in life, why settle when finding a doctor? It is your health after all. So enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors, all with verified patient reviews. And you don't have to settle. You can go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. And these docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients. So go to ZocDoc.com slash that sounds fun and download the ZocDoc app for free and then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash that sounds fun. ZocDoc.com slash that sounds fun. That link, remember, and pretty much every other link you could ever hope for is in the show notes below, whether you're listening on a podcast or you're watching on YouTube, or it'll also be in our email we send out every Friday, the AFD Week in Review. You can sign up to make sure you're getting that as well in the show notes below. Okay, now back to our conversation with Eddie. That sounds fun. What is what going, is going on? on? <laughs> I knew we would talk about it. when it happened. I'm like, this is this is 
why we exist on What podcast. is going on? Okay. What? Do you want to do the brief recap How in case sick somebody's- is King Charles? Okay. Where is he? Okay. So King Charles hasn't been seen in public in a while, has a, has diagnosed, I believe it's like yes. prostate cancer. They said it's mm -hmm. treatable. Hopefully he's getting good treatment. Okay. That's not the really like juicy thing. It's that no. Kate, Kate, now to help fill me in, Kate in what January said that there was some sort of like cancer or something. Ab no, 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 abdominal surgery. Abdominal, abdominal surgery. surgery. That's Sorry, all we know. Abdomin she had abdominal surgery in January uh -huh. and then would not be doing any public events until March. Fine. Which, okay. Fine. Cauterization. I respect that that's so That's what much. cauterization leads to. Whoa, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. You don't you have to do You got to take anything. some time out of public life after cauterization, which we assume happened. So then things get weird because she then, what what is the deal like? She then appears like she's not at all seen. Like she's not even seen being yeah. transported. She's then in a car. That's right. And That's then right. and then people start to like, there's conspiracy theorists abound, which typically, like with royal stuff, I don't pay much attention to it because if a one off you don't pay attention to. Right. But like, now we're in a scuttlebutt about it. Because they it's, released a it's picture. Traumatic. Yeah. Yes. And the picture Ever. is one trillion percent photoshopped I mean, it's terrible for so many reasons and then she tweets supposedly sorry i'm an amateur photographer i like messing with pictures sometimes that's a summary yeah. you can google it and find the tweet it, yourself it couldn't even if i believe that have you seen the the latest with the vogue cover where it's the exact same face it's her vote yeah she took a vogue cover shoot in 2017 or something like that and they're like this yes. is pixel for pixel perfect there's no yes. way so basically this was a, the, the theory now where we stand as we record this, because things are developing, is that like, where yeah. is Kate and why are they working so desperately hard to put a public appearance on someone that is, mm -hmm. like something is so weird right now. So, okay, listen, next, you know, it's a thing on Instagram, right? TikTok, whatever, mm -hmm. Reels. I'm not on yeah, TikTok, yeah, but you know, yeah. it's all that. Yeah. And then yesterday on the Daily, which is New York Times Daily News podcast, they, at the end they tell a long story and then they and then they do a little commercial and then they do three like hits. Yeah. One of the three hits was Kate, Princess Kate, and it was like yeah. the royal family kind of thought they were making it better. Seems they just keep making it worse. <laughs> we'll see y'all tomorrow. Right. I mean, it was like <gasps> what? Like, is, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. This feels like. It, also, do you follow House and Habit? Do you know House and Habit? No, she's a uh, she's an independent journalist out of California and does like currently she's covering a lot of political stuff. But she used yeah. to be more of like a, um, a celebrity kind of like a independent journal. Like she would tell celebrity stories, but get real information from people. Right. Yeah. 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 It's very cool to watch. I, I, I am a big fan of what independent journalism is doing right now that we don't just yeah. have to watch CNN and Fox news, that there are these other people asking questions and getting answers. Yeah. That being said, she has not turned her sights from Biden, RFK and Trump in months yeah. until this. Well, she likes Ghislaine Maxwell, but until this, but, and right. now she's like, I got to pay attention because there is something. There is something. What is it, Eddie? The palace confirmed it with that Photoshop. Every They could have had plausible deniability if they had just been quiet, but they didn't. Yeah. They just didn't. Yeah. What is it? I mean, here's what I hope it isn't. I hope she's not like real sick, right? Like that's the yeah, part of this. It's too. like, oh, please don't end up being sick, sick. Please, please let it really be just yeah. something juicy. <laughs> something. Yeah. I want let it, it to be, be something that like, everybody just, let it be cotton candy for our cultural conversations. I'm with right. you. I do not want her to be sick. I don't want it to be. No, I don't, I don't want, want those be. kids to suffer. I don't want. No, no. I don't want any of them to suffer from having a sick wife or mom. Right. Or even just um, watching the crown again, being like, okay, like Diana on Dodie's boat. Like, okay, I get uh, it. Let's, let's be, let's be fickle about that. But then when it's like yeah. tragedy, you're like, oh, this yeah. isn't, this is a real human being. That's right. So I hope she's not. I sick. haven't watched the most recent season because aren't Kate and William in the most recent season of crown? They are actually, okay. in my opinion. The most compelling part. Like, I thought they did a, oh, they cast Kate okay. and William really well. And I thought it was like, a, the crown kind of had some ebbs and flows. Kind of a lovely yeah. storyline there. They did a good job okay. with that. Um, okay, I need to watch the last season. I just, it's on my to-do list. A funny thing about New York, Eddie, is yeah. 
because I love going to Broadway shows and because yeah. I sold the majority of my closet last year so that I could go to Broadway shows, <laughs> I have a budget to go to Broadway shows. I don't watch as much TV up here as I do in Nashville, which is a statement in itself that I've actually talked to a therapist about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about how much TV I can watch in Nashville if I'm not careful. But up here I don't. So I'm, I'm behind on shows. I just finished Gilded Age. Have you watched Gilded Age? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Loved it. Because I, I, I'm i watching, right now I'm watching a Nashville amount of television. Um, oh, I'm, good. Yeah, great. I'm, I'm well, that's winter it. too. That's winter. Yeah. We can't be outside. Y'all are cold. I get it. It's winter in boot. Yeah. What happens in D.C.? Wh- what happens in your life during the State of the Union address? Does your life change when something big like that happens in D.C.? So we are on the other side of, right? We're on the other side of like the water there. So, but inside uh-huh. D.C. proper, which is a five minute drive up the road. The, yeah. The weirdest thing is the all day security. So like. You think about oh, where the State of the Union is happening. There is basically like layers of deep security roads closed. You cannot move in the city um, for that day. You can't even get close to the Capitol. And like, if you've never been to D.C., it's really, it's pretty small. So it's kind of like D.C. is like snowed in that day and you just stay away from it. In our world, I think the other most interesting part is how many like very practical ramifications there are to what the president says ah. on our neighbors. So it's like if the president oh, gets up there and says, we're going to uh, we're going to declare an emergency at the border, which he didn't say. But if he had said that, all of a sudden, all of our neighbors who work for FEMA, of which there are many, have a different job tomorrow than they did today. So that's the only weird part is it's like real people who are like watching it to go like, oh, OK, my life just changed. So. Oh, right. So it's almost like watching your boss do an interview it's, uh, do a live speech and your boss is telling everyone, yes. here's how everyone who works for me is going to do their job for the next year. That's right. Like, oh, right. Okay. I'm, I'm with my communications team and we are, we have tweets written and ready that we're waiting to fire during yeah. the state of the union. So we're watching it because we are, uh, you know, we're not, we're like, we, we are responding politically, but we don't know what the president's going to say. And so, oh, so, so, interesting. so it's like a very practical thing. not practical is not the right word but it's yeah. like a very like it's a work night for people it's a it's a different sort of thing yeah that is really cool it is it i is was neat. wondering about that when i was watching i was like i wonder how this affects like the coffold's life and michael i mean michael and Melissa Ware are in politics so it yeah. affects their life in that way too but for y'all who live there like the all day all day security yeah, yeah it's just a it's a different deal fascinating um listen i want to I don't mean to move us along, but we have, there's a couple of 2016 things we have to talk about. Can we do that? Certainly. Yeah. We've Uh, done a great job so far with 2014 and 2015, really recapping the year. We really, I really feel like so proud of us. If people weren't paying attention those two years, they have a sense of it. Uh, Yeah. 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 If they weren't, if they weren't (laughs) in the world yet, they, now they know what the year was like. Uh, Okay. Go bring me what's in your heart. Well, I mean, we know like we have our little list in front of us of like billboard top hundred. Yeah. 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 But I think, the yep. moment is Hello by Adele. Like, when he heard that song that year, didn't it, like, there was just something that's just, like, music changed. There's something very different that happened. That it, did, you, did you feel that with that song? Yes. I'm so glad you brought that up because it is... The interesting thing is 2016 feels like yesterday. Because also on the list is Sorry, Justin Bieber, yeah. Can't Stop the Feeling, Justin Timberlake... Like those songs are still in our vernacular. Like those can play on the radio. Very much. Those could be on a playlist. Very much. Yeah. The, that that the, album of Adele's that Hello is on, I still listen to by choice oh yeah. often. The movies that are on the list of like highest grossing films are still on the featured Netflix. Like here's yeah. what's like 20. Yeah. There, there is a, a lot in little time that happens between in the last, yeah. whatever, seven years that we're covering. But anyway. Also, let's let's complain to our boss, Lillian, yeah. who's my assistant, but she also makes this list for us. Yeah. She put Moana as an honorable mention? Yeah. I mean, that was... Oh, because she made highest grossing films oh. as a list. I was like, Lillian, that's not honorable mention, ma'am. The Moana soundtrack but and the Trolls soundtrack are very, yeah. very heavy rotation. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I'm uh, the the Adele. Maybe 2016 was is her breakout year. Is that what you would say? 
Oh, I, I mean, don't... she had some good songs before that, but that album is unstoppable. I would say most people did not know who Adele was before they heard Hello. Mm. Like, that was, a, I mean, okay. I, I, Thanksgiving episode of SNL that year, they parodied it. Remember, it was like the... Brilliant. I don't, I make a rule not to recap SNL skits because I just don't do a good job of it. But like, it was like, we are all listening to Hello and kind of don't know what to do with this. This is yeah, so yeah, yeah, good yeah, and yeah, different yeah. and special. Yes, yes. We'll link to it in the show notes if people didn't get oh, to yeah. watch it. What we could do, you and I could do, is spend our lives recapping SNL. I mean, it's, it is for you and I, oh, I just, a cultural yeah. touch point that we kind of both have had very much in common. If we I think it is so interesting. I do not like all of it. I just think it is such an interesting, we don't, we don't get another weekly no. commentary it, on the culture like that. Yeah, I don't think people would say like daily show and stuff, but I like the silliness of the yeah. skits still. I like the, I like the yes. mix of it. Um, Cause even that tells us what people are writing. Yeah. What are they finding interesting and what are they wanting to talk about? And yeah. Yeah. So um, Adele and James Corden in oh. carpool karaoke. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've watched that. It's more than <laughs> yeah. whatever you would guess. It is more than it's more than that. I love it so much. It's my favorite one. And then that like led to them being like besties. Yeah. And it makes sense. They're both like cheeky English. Fantastic. Right. You know, like I think they get the whole, like his last show. She came back on, didn't she? Yeah. I mean, it's very yeah. sweet. How come we're not friends with him yet? He feels like someone that would want to be friends with us. He does. Or are you? No, oh, no, no. I don't know him. Okay. I do. Me neither. I don't know him. No, I do. I do think. Yeah, I don't know. There was some difficult reporting about him towards the end of his run, but I don't I don't get a sense that he's not nice. <laughs> I get a About sense. workplace? Yeah, like yeah. Like workplace yeah, environment? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you never know if that stuff is very true or more true than we're even reading or completely fabricated. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, yeah. I kind of, I love his vibe. I liked his show. I liked his sensibility. I feel like there was a, Me too. a way of a kind of a little hole that he filled in culturally that yeah. hasn't. So where it's like, to me, Jimmy Kimmel feels like everybody, like when you see him interview people, he knows everybody, Yeah. but he is like, He's very cool. Very cool. Like people, he he he's uh, sophisticated. Yeah. Jimmy Fallon is is everybody's fan. Yeah. He is thrilled to be there. He is a huge fan of the work you do. Right. He's happy to be friends with you. He's a huge fan. And Stephen Colbert is kind of your big brother. Yeah. And then James Corden was like your little brother. I don't know. He was yeah. like your. What is it? What's the word for what he, what the role he filled? It was so different than those other three guys. It was because, because Kimmel is definitely like the cool, the cool guy, but he also, he's the only one of those shows that doesn't do a pre-interview. People walk out and he just goes cold, just goes for it. Only one filmed in LA now too, because of James Corden. Oh not yeah. Doing it anymore. But there's a certain confidence that he York. has. And he's also just, you know, yeah. but he's like, he is like your cool uncle. Right. Jimmy Fallon yeah. is like your fr frat boy buddy. I know yeah. he's not like Freddie, but he's yeah. just sort of like all it's, it's all going to be hangs. We're not going to get. He's too, in. He's in. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. He's up. He is. If if you had all their phone numbers and you're like, who's up for it? Jimmy yeah. Fallon's up for it. Jimmy's right, whatever from it what is. They project. He's up for it. Yeah, it was. It was that. I don't know how to explain it, but it, what, you're right. It was like that brother or just like pal. It was like. It was yeah. Us. Yeah. It felt like, like he made Jay. He made Harry Styles uh, seem like a friend to me. Like I, right. I suddenly was like, oh, Harry Styles is a normal person because yes. James Corden is friends with him. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, that's really well put. So, um, I want to know James Corden. Okay, we'll just yeah. put that out to the Lord and to the, <laughs> our, any of our friends. I would love to know James Corden. Put it out. I didn't um, want to say put it out to the universe because I don't really believe that we that the universe does anything for us. So, well, and also put you can it put it out, out to the Lord whoever, and our friends. You can put it out to whomever yeah. you want because if they're big yeah. enough, they're probably hearing it. So just say whatever. I mean, yeah, go with Lord. If you're, if you happen to be wrong, which you're not, but if you happen to be, I'm pretty sure the universe is going to figure it out. If it's vice versa and everybody's talking to the universe and it happens to be God, I'm pretty sure God's like, and they I should get be it. talking to the Lord. I that get is, the, that I, is. Yeah. I get the nuance of what you're trying to do here. Yes. 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 I would like to be friends with James Corden. He seems like a very normal person to me. Let's see if that all is gets there a out. famous person that you see on like the Oscars or you see on SNL or a tonight show or that you follow that you're like, we would totally be friends or we will totally be friends. Will, I don't think, I don't have that kind of confidence in myself, but people that I'm like, uh -huh. I could, I would like to hang with that person. I will say just because we're fresh off the Oscars. I was like, 
I think Kimmel and I, I would love to go toe to toe with him in a fun way. Yeah. Like I would love to yeah. learn what he knows about smoking meat and making pizza. Um, I'll think of a better one. Do you have fun? Do you have people? No, I don't think that. I don't think you need a better one. I think Jimmy Kimmel is a great, and you know, Jimmy Kimmel, I hear the smart list guys talk about him a lot. Like he's yeah. in their crew. Yeah. And I think that's a crew you could hang with like the Jason Bateman, the Will Arnett. Like I oh, think you could be in that friend group. It's Sean. It's now that you've said it, it yeah, is. Yeah. And Sean, I would yeah. love like Sean to come over for dinner and just uh-huh. assimilate into, he would love the girls. Sure. Him, Brianne would be yes. best friends. And yes. he, he would be perfect for, I pop into the room every 10 minutes, make yeah, a couple jokes totally. and we're out. Like Sean to me 100%. is just like such a fantastic human and he's got yes. depth and snark. I love, you said that, that is who I'm going to go with is Sean. Yeah. Yeah. I think that yeah. group of friends would be an easy fit for you. Sean Hayes, Will and Grace. Uh, just so people know. Yeah. As for me in my house, who would I like to be? <laughs> I will serve with? the universe. I mean, yeah. I, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, Jimmy Fallon, I re, I think Jimmy Fallon and Kelly Clarkson, I think what's going on at 30 rock yes. with these shows, Jimmy Fallon, Kelly Clarkson, Seth Meyers, I would like to run in their friend group. You have always mentioned Fallon very endearingly. Like this has been a yeah. long term. I've never like, been on a show that makes one of us. Because you, you were more excited about that than anyone. <laughs> like you were tickled. But Fallon. I think about yes. it. I, it's my Roman Empire. <laughs> I think about it so much that you got to be on Fallon. Um, uh, yeah, Kelly Clarkson. You had to have had those comparisons drawn to you before. Kelly Clarkson, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Southern, yeah. really approachable, Which I, really mm-hmm. nice. Like that's. Thank you. That's, that's very kind. Not a hard she's, connection. She's though. amazing. She is. I'm so glad they've gotten her into hosting a TV show. Because she yeah. really is a Swiss army knife of talent. She like, is. N- n- she, and Jimmy's that way a little bit too, Fallon, because he can sing. But she can sing. Yeah. And so her doing her show, like when a musician comes on, she sings with them or she opens the show singing. And I, I really enjoy her show. She's a true like variety show host. Like she can yeah. be exactly who she needs to be in any moment yes. and seems to be into it like if she's doing a cooking segment to tie the whole like, thread i think she, i if i remember correctly what i understood was happening last night on the tonight show because i got i went and saw a musical i can't wait to tell you mm-hmm. i got home and on jimmy fallon was the guy who always hosts the olympics not bob costas but i think his name is mike Tarico? and uh yes cool and peyton manning and kelly clarkson i think they're the nbc host for um the olympics that's fantastic. And they asked Jimmy on the show, which it, it was a cute skit, but I'm sure it was predetermined to host yeah. the closing ceremonies. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's fun. Right? Uh, good for them for bringing in. It's interesting. It's an interesting move, isn't it? Because all of those, I mean, Mike Trico, sports, like they used to bring in, it was a more yeah. of a news-based. I mean, I remember seeing... Yeah. You know, it was like Tom Brokaw and the Today Show yes. folks. It was like a, it was like a, yes. a news spin. This is definitely a yeah. sports and entertainment, which sure, why not? Yes. If it keeps the ratings up and people, sure, they keep right. playing it. That's oh. right. And Kate Kate Manning, speaking of Swiss army knives of talent, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, widely talked about as the most talented uh, sports figure guest on SNL. Like everybody's like sports yeah. guys you just have low expectations for them nobody thought michael jordan was going to be good peyton manning, though. and he wasn't yeah right like peyton manning fantastic <laughs> fantastic he's so funny on snl i oh, think yeah. and I, I i have a lot of respect for people Kelly, this is kelly carson too yeah. i have a lot of respect for people who finish a career this is what we'll get mm. to watch with jason kelsey yes who finish a career and then springboard into another career yeah, uh, and see them succeed in that too. It's pretty neat. I think that's fun to watch. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, it's I guess very really neat. fun to watch. Um, what is Jason Kelsey going to do? What do you think? I mean, it feels like he's ramping up a media empire. I don't, I don't see him as being like a sports commentator, but he does feel like he's going to be, I, I, I don't know how you explain this new person, but it's like influencer, but more than, but like a lot of depth and content to it. Like their, their show mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is exploding. It's just so popular. It is. It's beyond. Well, I mean, they do not to toot our own horn, but burn, burn. Yeah. I mean, that is what 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 Annie and Eddie keep talking is what they do. Uh, they right. literally just sit down and talk to us, and so everybody wants everybody wants the inside of the two of their lives. Wants to yeah. know what's going on, 
far more than they want to know about your the inside of our lives, but <laughs> they want to know. But what's it like to date Taylor Swift? I mean, who's sitting on a microphone and talking about that besides right. Travis Kelsey? They're just talking about so it. So I think it is, and they uh, just talk about it. They just like talk about it, and it is so. And talk about his retirement. Talk about their parents and coaches moving around in the NFL. And yeah, so I very interesting. That sounds fun. Hey friends, just interrupting this conversation one more time to tell you about one of our incredible partners, Shopify. Okay, if we put 10 seconds on the clock, how many things can you name that are always growing? Okay, let's go. Your relationships, your skills, the snake plant in my living room, your customer base. How about businesses on Shopify? Shopify is the e-commerce platform behind shopantiefdowns.com, and it is the perfect partner to help us get new merch into your hands. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. And you don't have to sell just your own stuff anymore. With Shopify Collective, you can curate products to sell from brands that you love, giving your customers more variety in your business more sales. They remove the guesswork with built-in tools to help you create, execute, and analyze your sales. Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. So if you start small with an online shop or decide to open up your own store one day, they have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and an in-person POS system. So you are all set. Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash sounds fun, all lowercase. Again, that's shopify.com slash sounds fun. Go there right now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash sounds fun. And one more amazing partner I get to tell you about, Real Paper. Listen, we don't talk about toilet paper a lot around here, but did you know that the first perforated toilet paper rolls were introduced in 1890? That's really impressive. But it actually wasn't until 1930 that we officially had like splinter free tissue paper. You guys, <laughs> splinter free. Prior to that, people just used whatever was on hand. So today we're just chopping down trees to make something that we use once and then flush it. Ugh. It's why I really like real paper. Real makes a sustainable toilet paper that doesn't contain trees and instead uses 100% bamboo. I've tried it, y'all. I like it. I have it at my house in Nashville. I have it at my house in New York. They also partner with One Tree Planted. And with every box of Real that you buy, they are funding reforestation efforts across the country. Real Paper is available in easy, hassle-free subscriptions or for one-time purchases on their website. All orders are conveniently delivered to your door with their free shipping, and it's 100% recyclable, plastic-free packaging. If you head to realpaper.com slash TSF, like that sounds fun, and if you sign up for a subscription using the code TSF at checkout, you're automatically going to get 30% off your first order and free shipping. That's R-E-E-L-P-A-P-E-R.com slash TSF, or use the promo code TSF to get 30% off your first order plus free shipping. So let's stop flushing our forest and try Real's tree-free paper. Real is paper for the planet. And now back to finish up our conversation with Eddie. That sounds fun. Uh, it does remind me uh, of the other part of our first podcast together that made me emotional, episode 21. Uh, yes. I, you started, you did a nice introduction, Nashville, uh, top show, new activist. And then I'm like, and then I said, so what happens like, do you ask me questions now? Of course, I don't have the wherewithal to not say a thing out loud. Like, I, I listen to myself. I'm like, why did you say it? You're on a microphone, man. But like I said, so what uh, happens? You just ask me questions now and you know what you said? You're like, no, we just talk. And literally, uh, that was the end of the interview. And we haven't changed format. The rest of the whole conversation. Right. And then the Christmas hot take show. And then it's just so interesting. And then every year like, since then. It took us... And then Annie and Eddie, we did Annie and Eddie keep talking from episode 21. We called it back then. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, we did 20 seconds wow. of typical format. And after 20 seconds, it was just like, click. Nope. We're just going to go yeah. with it. And then it's, it's a yeah. format that has both served us well, but also I like seeing in other people. They clearly, the Kelsey's do not know who we are, but I do like that. They're just, I don't think they prep much. Maybe they have a Lily and that no, gives I them a little they just something. Talk about, yeah, 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 yeah. But, they get, Lily and only gives us a list because she wishes we would actually talk about 2016 because we are, we are around in third on this show. And I will say we, got, we're not even No, We talked about the Olympics. We talked about hello by Adele. Yeah. Uh, That's really good. Chewbacca mom. 
<laughs> that was. Oh yeah, I like cute. her as a person. Oh, I can't funny. believe that was 2016 though. Wow. Yeah. Um, huh. The queen turned 90 in 2016. She was already shockingly old today? a long what time ago. What would she do today? Oh, it'd be Lord a, have mercy. She would be absolutely silent. She would not I, be saying a word. We would know no more. Just we, Yeah, we would know less. Honestly, no. oh. I think we would know less. Oh, yeah. I don't even think that original picture would have been sent. It would have been just, there may have been a shot of her walking the corgis in Scotland. And uh-huh. then that would have been it for the next six months. And she would have said That's like, right. Well, the, and that and that's too bad for you. Precisely. Because that's what we so do. So when the cleaning ladies clean your house, do they always move the furniture? You hear it like they're doing loud, currently. Don't you? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna tell you right now. That's they some are, good. You need to advertise for them. I feel really bad, and I'm really sorry. They're they interior are, decorators as they, well. They are literally in Eve's room right now, which is directly above me. I just heard them go from <laughs> from bed to vacuuming the floor. And now there's another Fantastic. person vacuuming the floor that is right outside. So just right outside. I can't hear that. I could just hear the bumping for a minute. It I'm, is totally fine. I know, but I'm really sorry. And I'm sorry for Craig, who's going to undoubtedly have to like fade in and out of all of this. But oh my God. It will be totally fine. Um, Eddie, anything since we've fully recapped 2016, clearly. Yeah. Anything. And we really went hard on the political side of 2016. So I'm glad we went ahead and handled that. That was good <laughs> oh, for us to talk we through were, that. We were clearly That's very fun. into that. Yeah, that was clearly a big part of our year. Um, anything going on in Eddie Land we need to know about? Gosh, I don't know. I, I know that's crazy, and I didn't. I usually ask Brianna, and I, lo- and I looked through the Facebook to see if there were memories. Yeah. Like, um, you know, oh, is it because I put the definitive article on for Facebook, like a thousand-year-old man, like going yeah, to Yeah, 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 I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. Is the a definitive article? Maybe. Well, um, are you? One of my questions is, in, in Eddie Land, are you listening to any new pods? Anything we should be uh, listening to? Oh, right now, no. Huh. I really have, I mean... I, we talked about it, I'm sure, but Fly on the Wall, the SNL podcast. No, with, I don't know Fly on the Wall. Oh, uh, Dana Carvey and uh, David Spade. <sighs> David Spade. I've seen, the, I've seen clips, but I didn't know. Is it good? It's fine. It's like, I'm not an uber fan of it because sometimes they just, they go off on their own thing, but they do. Uh, t- me. <laughs> Unlike anybody we know. <laughs> I just explained why I don't like a show that I'm currently doing. Um, <laughs> whoops, the daisies. Um, <laughs> uh, but they do have like SNL guests on, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like if you're an SNL yeah. head, which we are clearly are because we've talked about it for quite a bit this show. But I've also been into. Um, I kind of go in phases. I'm a little bit out of podcast phase right now, and a little bit books on okay. books on tape. But you know. <gasps> Spotify, <laughs> audiobooks. That's right. I, I have a friend whose email is books on tape at, and then the it's not Gmail, but it's whatever. I'm like, so smart. That's just a great email address. Um, and when you get to say that to people, uh, yeah, just just email me books on tape at <laughs> aol.com. Yeah, yes, great. Exactly. So a little bit of that. So I've been listening to, uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of books on tape lately, trying to get through okay. some like big chunky books that I may not have the patience to yeah. read. So I just did like a history of Cuba. Yep doing Grapes of Wrath right now, which like, so you can tell where my- When is your audiobook listening time? Mine in New York is I can listen the most commuting, right? Like yeah. walking to the train station, taking the subway downtown or uptown, walking to my, I mean, I've got a, everywhere is 20 minutes yeah, and everywhere is foot and subway. It's, so what's your listening time? It's that, or it's, I mean, noise canceling, AirPod Pro things that you guys sent uh-huh. me, they're the best. Um, yeah, they're great. So, so like today I'll go outside and I will, I will mow and do whatever. Like that's a half hour of just like dialed in and I can just move with my hands and do little, yeah. Go, you know, yeah. it's just like something that's, but I, yeah, I don't do a lot of commuting hence because I am at my commute right now. I'm here. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> right. I just listened to Emily Freeman on the podcast and Jamie Golden said that she sits and listens to audiobooks and does nothing. That is a... And I, you know, we love Jamie. That is psychopath. Like, how can how you? In the, I just can't imagine. Can you just? I do puzzles. I work out. I walk. Like, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm playing a game on my phone. I'm forever what? doing something. What is she looking while at? I'm what is listening? She playing with. I mean, she's just. That Emily asked the same question. Hands she on said, her knees. Where, just what are your eyes doing? Yeah. That's she a, said sometimes she's cheese and crackers. 
How do you do? I'm like, I can't imagine. I need to be doing something. Um, I have a long story to tell you, but it's not long to get to a new podcast I listen to. Go. I got a text message the other day that said, from a number I don't know, that said, you uh, missed out, missed out, bro, next time. And then it's a picture, and then it's a fist pump. And the picture is, as if people listen to our 2015 episode, you won't believe this. The picture is a bald villain. It is a very attractive, to me, guy. It's yeah. my type of guy. Right, right. Holding a big fish. Holding a big fish. Oh. Sitting on the back of a boat, holding a fish. All of that. And I'm working. like, I'm like, this is, who... Who accidentally sends me a picture of himself that is exactly by a bald villain? Yeah. A, a, a man that I'm initially attracted to, though I have no idea right. what kind of human he is. Right, right, right. And, right. and, and you don't so, have him saved in your phone, so like this might no. be just a, this This is a wild one. Okay, so. This is just a wrong number. I think this is just a wrong number. And I think, what are the chances? Is this the meet cute that this someone is, was supposed to dial 5-1 and they dialed 5-2? I'm in. Like, same. I'm in. <laughs> right. And so I say to some of my friends, what do we do? What do we think? You know, you immediately get the gaggle together. Yeah. And so I just respond with like, great catch. I don't think you sent this to the right number. <gasps> you know, I'm kind of being like very, I was like, I don't think you meant to send this to a woman named Annie. Yeah. Just in case there is some world where he, we do know each other. And I forgot, I put my first name. Yeah. And then he says, oh shoot. So sorry. Wrong number. <sighs> I don't know anybody with your name. I said, great. Then I thought, oh, that's too bad. And then I was like, leave it be, Annie. Don't be, don't be this guy. Just leave it be. Speaking of great catch, and then, and then just put on your website. Listen to this. The next day <gasps> at 11 p.m. He's in. You're in. He's in. The number texts again, and it says, wait. No, 8 o'clock was wait. And I'm sitting at dinner with two friends. And I show them. I'm like, oh, I've been meaning to tell you all this story. And my buddy that's with me, he says, this is a scam. You know this is a scam, right? And I was like, Got no, it. how did they know? How did they perfectly picture the right person to scam me? And I, and, he, and I was like, no, this doesn't look like a scam. This looks like a wrong number. Yeah. And he was like, no, I'm going to send you this podcast to listen to. Here we are. I'm going to send you this podcast to listen to. And, um, and, but this is like a thing people are doing, a scam. And I'm like, oh, that can't be true. I get, I don't respond. I just let it be. I'm like, right. you're right. I'm going to let this go. And remember he had said, wait. And then he's, and I had said, nice catch. And he, and then, but I don't think he meant this to send this to a woman named Manny. And then he says, did you mean me or me or the fish? Okay. So that's his next text. That wait, is did you mean me a, or the fish? It's a little aggressive and it's a little creepy or I mean. Both of those things. But it's. Yeah, and, yeah, that, right, and that. And that. But, but if I, the radar had not been up yet. Now I am very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And so I go, I'm not responding to this. I should probably just block this. And yeah. I blocked it. Blocked that number, deleted it, deleted it off of everywhere. I let <sighs> important people know. So my buddy sends me this podcast to listen to about scammers calling your phone and texting oh, you. Oh, no. And it is, an ep it is a show called Search Engine. Have you heard of this yet? Nope. Okay. It's called, you're, you are about to, all your... I'm All your um, synapses down. are about to fire because it is by PJ Vote who used to do Reply All. Oh. All right. And so, so for you, those of you who haven't listened, Reply All was a show that was about solving problems on the internet. Why do I keep hearing this song every time I go to this certain website? Why do I keep getting this email? It was a very interesting show about what happens on the internet. So, you can read up about why that show doesn't exist anymore, whatever. But so this is PJ Vote's new show, and it's searching and it answers questions. Are chimpanzees unhappy at the zoo? And and so the question was, why do I keep getting texts that think that they know me, or why do I keep getting scams that are texts? And he goes into the whole thing, and it is wild. It is a wild story. Ew. It's kind of it's very sad. It ends up with like with people in uh, Asian countries that are having to, that are being forced to make phone calls and send text messages. And it is really sad, but I, all that because I got a bald villain in my God, text messaging. Annie, as a B on behalf of the listeners of which I was just a listener with you on this, uh -huh. everybody that was listening to that, you walked us right off a ledge because <laughs> bald villain texts like wait. I mean, creepy. we were creepy. all in, but the degree to which all of us, and I can speak, 
for the entire listening audience right now. The degree to which we immediately fell off the ledge and just fell to our demise. Guess what? Me too. I blocked that number so fast. I know this isn't like lesson time, but like way to not go alone. I I just feel like that was, it's both juicy and fun to be with people, but also it was like, your friends weren't going to let you, they were going to make sure you knew you were jumping off a ledge, which you didn't, you already knew this. Um, That's right. And in the long run, I'd like to thank the guy who caught the fish because then I found a podcast I think I'm going to really enjoy. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Um, I want to say one more thing because I know we're rounding third. There is one more thing that Lillian does on our sheet that is, Uh I don't know that I know her well, but there is something fantastic that she does, which we're talking movies, cultural moments, everything. Yes. And then she includes yes. snacks that were created in the 2016. The best snacks it's, that were created, yes. It is the randomest, wildest thing that I love. So real quick. Uh-huh. Uh, if, <laughs> sun Which chips, of those stood harvest, out to you of the snacks? Right. Uh, well, sun Me chips. Too. It's just a Exact chip. same. Right. The idea that the veggie harvest was born in 2016, and I will pick that on an airplane anytime it's one of the snack options. Yeah. Because they're tiny. They're like the size of a, a cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah. And they are amazing. But snacks don't really have a like a public release to this. They just sort of enter yeah. into the ether and then we they disappear. Thought. And one day you're like, where did Cheetos pause go? And you're like, oh, it's uh-huh. been 25 right. years. Right. I got it. Right. But right, n- right, right, but right, right. Seeing right, right. her list out the snacks were like, it's yeah. Weird. There was a time before yeah, yeah, yeah. white cheddar popcorn. Annie's organic white cheddar right? popcorn. We don't need to That's know exactly that. exactly right. But it is funny to think that it existed. I'm glad we be- we don't have to live in that world anymore. Or the world without Sheila G's brownie brittle, because I live for that stuff. I don't know what that is. What? I'm going to ship some to you right now if you think I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't think you're kidding, I'm shipping but I don't today. know what it is. But you're going to love it. All right, Edward. Well, we've done it again. We've really done it again. We really did um, 2016. Happy 2016 to us. <laughs> Maybe we need to, wait, no, we should talk about this later. Maybe we need to do something around the Olympics. You think? I mean, we're going to, whether we decide to do it now or we just decide to do it the day of, uh, we're going, you know, yeah. we can't not. Yeah. You guys um, buckle up. Annie and Eddie keep talking about the I wanna, Olympics. I want to do a live, someday I want to figure out a live thing with you where you can like sign How off. about during the closing ceremonies? <laughs> <laughs> on the stage of the Ryman. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. <laughs> Fulfilling a lifelong dream of appearing on the Ryman. And what, you, what does a live thing mean? What do you mean? Like you could simulcast. Like. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know I how like you could saying. watch where the we, Super Bowl. Where and you we could, go live. Yeah. I'd like to go live to something and just like watch it and react. I don't. Technically, I don't know if it's possible. I don't even know if you want to do it. And I really don't know if your brand needs it. But. Hey, Siri, when are the opening ceremonies for the 2024 Olympics? Oh, she just typed it to me. July 26th. Yeah. That's a short, it's all, wait, it opens July 26th and it closes August 11th? Yeah, they're only a couple weeks long. 15 days? Yeah, they're not that long. We got to get focused. We got to get focused. We got to dial in. I'm writing this down. Um, Annie, happy 2016. Thank you for allowing me to podcast Thanks, same to you. What a pleasure. Um, (laughs) All right, friends, go out and wash your hands. (laughs) Bye, buddies. You guys, isn't he the best? Wild. These conversations are just hilarious to me. We talked about all the things. I cannot wait to hear what you think after what you heard today. Let us know your favorite 2016 memory over on Instagram. And if you have any questions from this episode, I'm sure you do. Me too. Um, Just drop them in the Q&A box in your Spotify app if you're a Spotify listener like me. Or send them to us on Instagram at That Sounds Fun Podcast. And we will try to answer them there. If you need anything else from me, you know I'm embarrassingly easy to find. Annie F. Downs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the places you need me. That is how you can find me. I think that's it for me today, friends. Go out or stay home. Do something that sounds fun to you. And I will do the same. Today, what sounds fun to me is eating dinner with some of my favorite friends in Nashville. I am back in Nashville this week, and I am happy to be there. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you back here on Thursday. Remember that it is our last episode before Holy Week. We don't record or release on Holy Week just to let everybody's lives get a little bit quieter, yours and ours. But we always end with a great pastor theology voice, and we are excited to bring on Dr. Joel Mutamale. So we will see y'all on Thursday with Dr. Joel.